What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about Spring Boot unit testing. And this is going to be a very practical and real world introduction to the world of unit testing a REST API in Spring Boot. But it would not be a course without talking about the big why. Why do we need to learn unit test? What's the big deal? And for 90% of people who are watching this, you need to write unit tests for your personal projects and not having unit tests in your personal project, whether you're self-taught, whether you're going to college, a lot of times can be a deal breaker. So make sure you get at least 70% of your code tested and you should be good to go. Um, also, you need to be cleared for takeoff. What does that mean? Well, when you actually start working before you can push code to a repository, you have to run all of the unit tests. And if all of the unit tests are green, congratulations, you can push the code into the actual repository where it will hopefully get pushed into production. And here's a very big warning to people. If you push code to a code base without running the unit test and you break unit tests and you don't fix them, that is a deadly sin and that could actually get you into a lot of trouble. So make sure that you are running your unit test before you actually push code up. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, at a higher level, at a more architectural level, and this is what your boss is probably gonna be thinking about more, is that it prevents bugs. How does it prevent bugs? Well, you're coding along and you don't really realize it, but you just broke somebody else's code. And you may have not even touched their code, ever and it could still break it and you try to fix that code and it breaks somewhere else and before you know it you have a mess on your hands and unit tests prevent this from happening also just from a more fundamental level it helps you think about your code more it's kind of fun and it's less cognitively demanding than some other aspects of software development okay so explained like i'm five what is unit testing and the best kind of weirdest example, and I use this example because it helps people remember, how would you test if somebody's bladder is working? What you would do is you would put them in front of you so they can't cheat, you would hand them the water, and then you would test for the output, which would be they would urinate. And that's how I would assume that you would test we don't really do anything that much different in programming. What you do is you take your function, you put something into it, and you test for outputs, but you do this at scale. You do this for every single line in your code base. And as you could imagine, if you tested the inputs and the outputs of every single um, piece of code in your code base, you could reasonably assume that the code is not breaking. You can't 100% stop it, but it's going to filter out a lot of the bugs. And that's the whole entire idea of it. So the first place that we're gonna start testing is going to be the repository layer. The repository layer, if you don't know what that is, it's the closest layer to our database. It has the easiest methods and for learning purposes, it's a good place to start. But rule of thumb here, you don't have to test everything. In fact, I would not recommend 100% test coverage. You ideally only want to unit test things that are very large and prone to changes and prone to breaking. And a lot of these methods that we're going to write are very good for learning, but really realize that you only want to test code that needs to be tested. But let's go ahead in here and let's talk about how we actually start building our unit test. There's a saying in unit testing, arrange, act, assert. They sometimes call it AAA. It's sometimes called BDD, Behavior Driven Development. And it stands for how exactly we arrange our test. So for the first few tests, I'm going to kind of walk along with you, quote unquote, and we will sort of unit test everything together. And I will walk you through each arrange, act, and assert. But after a couple of these, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start diving in. But for the first one, so arrange. This is this part right here. Arrange is when you actually go get the jar of water that I was talking about. I gave the analogy of how you would test somebody's pee or how you would test to see if somebody's bladder works. This is the jar. This is what you're going to actually insert into the function that you are trying to test. So act. This is the actual function in your code that you are going to test. 
This is the human body. So we are going to take this Pokemon. We're inserting this Pokemon inside of our uh, assert. So we have arrange once again. So arrange here. And what's going to happen is this code is going to be inserted into the co actual code that we are trying to attest. And then after this is the assert. The assert is down here. This is the assertions. The assert is going to be the actual, you are saying, did the person return P? You have to be able to check to see, you have to assert that something is actually true. And these assertions at the bottom are just basically pieces of code to check, is this not null? Is this greater than zero? So the actual code base that I'm gonna be using is on my GitHub. You can easily implement these unit tests on your own code base and just follow along. All of the techniques and the tactics that are going to be used will work on almost any code base. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to check that we have the right dependencies. If you are downloading this or if you are cloning this from my GitHub, you will have these. Also make sure to clone at the place where the unit tests are starting so that you have all of the code and you don't have all the unit tests so you can actually learn and type along. But if you are not using the clone, make sure to also add H2 database, make sure to add unit testing as well, and you will have a easy time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the actual test file. Now, if you are familiar with Java, what you will begin to realize is that there's a main inside the source file, there's a main and there's a test. And as you could obviously believe that we're going to be doing the testing in the test file. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Okay. Uh, next thing that you want to do is we're going to create another package. And within this package, we're just going to call this repository. Um, and you could also go ahead in here and add some of the different ones. So we've already got our repository that looks good. And also need to make sure the repository is within the API and within this right here. Otherwise it will not work. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're going to just go ahead and add a file called our Pokemon repository test. So we'll go in here, we'll have Pokemon repository test. Okay, so e pretty easy. What we need to do now is we need to add actual uh, annotations. So in order for uh, JPA test to be able, or data JPA test to pick up on this, in order for Spring Framework to actually pick up that the tests are located in this folder, you need to add this annotation. Also, we are going to be using a H2 database to simulate a real database. We could add these to the actual database, but I don't think that that's a very good idea. So what we have is an in-memory H2 database that automatically uh, does all of this for us. And it's actually very, very nice. It's It works very well. So we're gonna go configure test database or configure test database. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say the connection is a embedded database connection. And somehow uh, it does everything for us and provides us with a nice little in-memory database. So what we need to do now, because we are testing out a repository is we actually need to bring in the actual Pokemon repository. And because we're testing, we're doing actually testing here, we don't have to worry so much about the constructor. So you can automatically bring in AutoWire just like this. We'll have Pokemon repository and we'll bring this down one so that it doesn't look so bad. And then we will go down here and we will write our very first unit test. Okay, so how do we actually name a unit test? This is kind of important. So we talked about arrange, act, and assert, but another important thing is to um, be very consistent in how you name your unit tests. You don't have to name them exactly the way that I do it. What I do is I name them by the actual repository or the service or the actual part of the app that we're testing it. I uh, put the second part, which is going to be the name of the function. And then I put what I plan to, or what I plan for this test to do when it actually passes. And for each one, every single place that you ever work at will have this type of pattern. The uh, whatever you have first, followed by a underscore, what do you have second, followed by an underscore. They may have different ways and different wording, but pretty much all of them are going to have that same exact structure. So however you do it, just make sure that you put those underscores. Otherwise, um, you may get some odd stares. Okay, so 
first part that I'm testing is I'm testing the Pokemon repository. Then here we're going to have the save all and we are going to say is going to return saved Pokemon. Okay. And we're re always make sure that you're returning void test, never return anything. So if your test is returning things, probably not what you want. The next thing that we want to do is we need to arrange. So we need to go get our jars of water and then we are going to act and then we are going to assert. And it may seem kind of cumbersome to put all of this out here right now, but it will help you remember things. So what do we have to get in order to to actually um, perform the unit test. We need to go get a Pokemon. So let's look at our actual Pokemon repository and I am going to bring this over here. So in this case, we're not actually, we're testing things that are inside this actual JPA repository. So somewhere nested within all of these, I think it's in the CRUD repository, there is going to be a save and what we are trying to do is we are trying to test this exact method that is going to be safe how do we do that first we're going to bring in we're going to build essentially a fake pokemon and create it here on the fly with a pokemon builder so if you want the builder there's different ways to do this but it's very nifty to be able to have this nice little builder thing is you add builder to the model and if you don't know um, if you don't know where I went, essentially what I went into was my Pokemon model, which is what we're going to be inputting into the actual test. And I added this builder annotation, and this is what's going to allow me to build nice, nice objects like I'm about to do. So we're going to go builder dot name, and we're going to give this Pokemon a name of Pikachu. So it'll be Pikachu. And then we will have here, we will have a type of electric just like this and I'll bring this over. So bring this over, so electric. And then we also have to have the build annotation just like this. And you can take this and bring it down a little bit because it makes it look a little bit better. And let me make sure that I'm testing everything that, that needs to be tested. So all it has is the name and the type. And then we are going to act on it. So how exactly do we act on this? We essentially, we need to take this and we need to bring it into here through the Pokemon repository. And if you don't know how that works, it's really easy. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna have Pokemon, then we're going to have a saved Pokemon. Then we will have our Pokemon repository and we will just bring in our save, just like this. And essentially all we're doing is testing repository methods. So we we'll go here, then I'm going to assert and how am I going to actually test to make sure that this passed? What I'm going to do is I'm going to assert that the actual Pokemon that is returned is not null. That is definitely a good way to test it. So I also need to bring in assertions. I'm gonna say this Pokemon is not null. And if, the, if we get something from the database back that is null, we can safely assume that our test is not working correctly. So then we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to go assertions. So assertions dot assert that. And then we are going to pass in the saved Pokemon. So saved Pokemon. And then we are going to get the ID. Also make sure to get the ID because if you don't get the ID, what's going to happen is it's going to return the whole entire object. And another way that we could test this is say is greater than zero. And let's go ahead and see if this works. Hopefully it does, fingers crossed. And the way that you test it is you go up to here and you press your green little button. So we're gonna, moment of truth. I really hope this works, I'm not even lying. So, looks like, okay, we got, we got something. So it's running. And we've got the green light. We are ready to go. We've just written our first unit test. I'm actually really happy that that went through the first time because they very rarely do. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.